In this video, I'm going to discuss this question, why the logic of the Canaanite genocide is fundamentally flawed. All right, this is not going to be a long video. It's going to be just a short, quick summary, and it's based on arguments I develop at length in my book, Jesus Loves Canaanites. Now, the fundamental issue when it comes to the Canaanite genocide is the argument goes that, well, the Israelites had to expulse the Canaanites from the land and to destroy them and their culture because otherwise the Canaanites would have represented a morally corrupting influence on the Israelites. Now, the fundamental problem with this is that, as I argue at length in the book, uh, those actions that are ascribed to the Israelites with respect to the Canaanites constitute both genocide and ethnic cleansing in terms of seeking to eradicate an entire cultural, ethnic, religious group, and also attempting to expulse them forcibly, remove them from a geographic territory. Uh, that's ethnic cleansing and uh, uh, also genocide. The problem here is simply this, that when you undertake actions such as genocide and ethnic cleansing, particularly in the way that the Israelites have to go about it, which is through close contact killing, of people and then physically removing them, driving them out of the land through physical threat of sword and spear. What that involves is very close, intimate actions against those individuals of cutting them, stabbing them, threatening them, bludgeoning them, etc. cetera. Uh, and that kind of action toward another human being is profoundly psychologically traumatizing, not only obviously for the person who is the victim, but also for the perpetrator. The only exceptions to that are people who are clinically psychopathic and thus do not have any uh, moral compunction against doing those kinds of actions. They do not know sympathy or empathy. They have no ability to, to think about uh, the suffering of others as a morally significant issue. Apart from clinical psychopaths like that, every person finds it profoundly psychologically and emotionally and spiritually traumatizing to inflict that kind of violence upon other people. In fact, it is corrosive of one's moral conduct. And what commonly happens in situations like that is that in order to overcome the psychological and moral, and I'd say spiritual aversion to killing other people, uh, non-combatants, uh, what you have to do is you have to further dehumanize them. Now, this is a common phenomenon that we see throughout the history of genocide. So the genocides commonly come along with actions like uh, torturing the target population, mutilating the target population, raping the target population. All of those actions, those extreme horrific dehumanizing actions are ironically ways of coping with the short-term psychological stress and distress that is created by killing and inflicting extreme violence and terrorizing that civilian population. And that uh, then, assuming that the Israelites are not psychopaths, that would be the profound psychologically deteriorating impact upon them, upon their psyche, as they were inflicting this violence upon the Canaanites, that we could expect them to experience <coughs> extreme psychological trauma uh, and to seek to redress that trauma by further otherizing and dehumanizing the Canaanite victims through actions like torture and mutilation and, yes, rape. Uh, and so now we come to the ironic conclusion that the means in the text that is proposed for the Israelites to maintain their spiritual purity, their distinction from the world, is to engage in actions of genocide and ethnic cleansing upon a civilian population, which would have had profoundly psychologically, morally, and spiritually corrosive impacts upon the Israelites, both the genocidaires, the soldiers who were carrying out these actions, but also the wider Israelite population. Now that is one significant consideration and there are many others to go with it by which I think we really ought to seriously reconsider how we in fact read and apply these texts. And I argue that case again, a much more length in my book, Jesus Loves Canaanites.